more examples. We shall solve more examples in linear congruence equations. Find the solution to 4 times x minus 3 is congruent to 2 modulus 7 in the set. So which, which among this is a, is a solution to our congruence equation? So we begin by adding 3 to our congruence equation. And it becomes 4 times x is congruent to 2 plus 3 is 5 modulus 7. And this is the part where we must look for the multiplicative inverse of 4 modulus 7. What is that? Okay, so this is our integers 1 to 6. And these are the multiplicative inverse modulus 7. The multiplicative inverse of 4 modulus 7 is 2. Why? Because 4 times 2, 4 times 2 is equal to 8. And when we divide 8 by 7, okay, the remainder is 1. So that is our definition of a multiplicative inverse. x, x is the multiplicative inverse of a if the product is congruent to 1 modulo 7. So we will multiply this congruence equation by 2. So it becomes... 2 times 4 times x is congruent to 2 times 5. So 2 times 4 is congruent to 1. So this one becomes x. This is just x now. Okay, x. And then this one is congruent to 10. But what is 10 congruent to modulo 7? It's congruent to 3. 10 divided by 7 will give you a remainder of 3. So which, which among this... Uh, integers is congruent to 3 modulo 7. Obviously, it's 3. So our solution is x is equal to 3. Find the solution to 6x minus 5 is congruent to 4 modulo 7 in this same set. So again, we apply the properties of modular arithmetic and congruence. We add 5, okay? So this becomes 6x is congruent to 4 plus 5 is 9. 9 is congruent to 2 modulo 7. When you divide 9 by 7, the remainder is 2. Again, this is the part where we must look for the multiplicative inverse of 6 modulo 7. What is that? It's 6. Okay. Why? Because 6 times 6 is 36. And when we divide 36 by 7, it will give you a remainder of 1. Okay, that is what we are looking for when we are looking for the multiplicative inverse. That is how it should be. 6 times 2 is 12. And 12, of course, you know, is congruent to 5 modulo 7. So our solution to this equation or to this congruence equation from this set is this one. X is equal to 5. Okay, so I am bringing back this uh, problem. Okay, we already solved this and we found out that from among these integers, the solution to this congruence equation is this one. X is equal to 3. But this is what we shall do next. We will remove that restriction. We shall not confine ourselves to this set. We shall replace it with the set of integers. So if we look at the entire set of integers, are there other solutions to this congruence equation? Okay, so this is what I will do. Okay, I will add 7 to 3. Okay, the 7 here, the 7 here has something to do with your modulo. So 3 plus 7 is 10. Is 10 a solution to our congruence equation? Well, let's find out. 4 times 10 is 40 minus 3. Is this congruent to 2 modulo 7? Look at this. This one is equal to 37. 
when you divide 37, okay, by 7, okay, the remainder is 2. So, yes, 37 is congruent to 2 modulo 7, and so 10 is also a solution, and we obtained 10 from 3. We added 7 to 3, and we found out that 10 is also a solution. But let us not stop there. Let us not stop there. Instead of adding 7, let us add 2 7s. 2 7 is 14. Is 17 a solution? Let's find out. 4 times 17 minus 3, is that congruent to 2? Modulo 7, question mark. Well, this one is equal to 65. Again, another way to test for congruence is to use our definition of congruence. 65 minus 2 divided by 7. Is this an exact division? Is this an exact division? Guess what? 63 divided by 7 is equal to 9. So this means 17 is also a solution to our congruence equation. Now, where did 17 come from? It came from this. Our first solution is 3. And then we added, we added 1, 7. And we found out that that is also a solution. Now, we added 2, 7s. We found out that, yes, 17 is also a solution. Okay, let's go on. Let us... Let us subtract 7 from 3. From the two examples, we added 1, 7, 2, 7. Now, we will subtract 1, 7 from 3. So, 3 minus 7 is negative 4. Is negative 4 a solution to our congruence equation? Question mark. 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. Minus 3 is negative 19. Okay, so one way to test... If this congruence is true, is to use our definition of, of uh, congruence modulo 7. Negative 19 minus 2 divided by 7. Is this division exact? Well, yes, because it is equal to negative 21 divided by 7, which is equal to 3. Okay? To negative 3, I mean. So, negative 4 is also a solution. So this is what we are seeing from this congruence equation. First, we began looking for the solution for the linear congruence equation from the set, and we found out that 3 is a solution. But when we remove that restriction, now we are looking for the solution from the entire set of integers. We found out that, guess what? If 3 is a solution, 3 plus or minus a multiple of 7 is also a solution of the congruence equation if we are looking for the solution in the entire set of integers. Well, let's check that out. So let's say, for example, uh, we multiply 10 to 7. So let's say, for example, we multiply 10 to 7 and... We subtract 70 from 3. Is this also a solution? Question mark. Well, let's find out. 4 times negative 67 minus 3, is that congruent to 2? Modulo 7. Is negative 271 congruent to 2? Modulo 7. Okay, let us use the definition of of congruence modulo 7, negative 271 minus 2 divided by 7. What is the quotient? Is the result an exact division? Well, yes, it's equal to negative 39. So that means this congruence is true. So that means negative 67 is also a solution to this linear congruence equation.